So it's no secret that welding is one of my favorite things to do, uh, in particular MIG welding because I'm too poor to afford a SIG welder and I'm too ignorant to stick weld. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. I am not an expert, I would never claim to be an expert, that's just asking for trouble, but I know enough to stick things together and make them hold. Uh, I honestly can't think of any times I've had a weld break, so maybe I'm not terrible, I don't think I'm great, I think I'm middle of the road average, I can glue things together. So if you've never MIG welded before, um, this will be kind of like a good beginner sort of like start here sort of thing. Now obviously you'll need the welder and you'll need to make sure that the gas is on because if you don't you'll get a lot of porosity and I made that mistake a lot. Uh, I still make that mistake, I'll forget to turn the gas on because Usually I'll start welding something and then go like test fit it or something or get distracted and I'll be like I should turn the gas off because sometimes you get leaks and then you empty a hundred dollar tank of gas. <laughs> well I think this one's only like 40 or 50 but you get what I'm saying. Uh, so I'll turn them off and then forget that I turned it off, go back to welding and then I get a bunch of craters in my bead. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> Now what I always do, and this is just a cheap Harbor Freight one, I think I paid like 170 or 180 bucks for it like five years ago, and the thing has done nothing but work. Uh, I absolutely love this little turd. I would buy it again in a heartbeat. I do eventually want to get like a true Miller welder or something like that, something that uh, basically does all the work for you, but for now, for what I'm doing, this thing has been excellent. We've built a bunch of motorcycles, a bunch of Volkswagen trikes, obviously the back half of Jack Black over here. The thing just works. And if you're on a budget like I am, I think the thing's great. Anyway, I'm not trying to sell you on that. I'm just saying sometimes you don't always have to spend a thousand dollars to do what a two hundred dollar welder can do. So most welders will have, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it has a chart up here that shows you like a, a rough idea on what you should set the welder up to weld a specific thickness. So what I've got here is just a couple little chunks of steel that I found laying around. Uh, and they are different thicknesses. This one's about an eighth, this one's a quarter right there, but I'm gonna be welding over here. Generally, they say when you're welding different thicknesses like that, you want to set it up for the thicker one. I have never had good luck with that. Um, maybe I'm just not good enough, but I usually end up burning through the thinner one too much to, and it makes me uncomfortable. So I'll try to aim kind of in the middle of those favoring the smaller one. That's just what works for me. Um, but yeah, this, it has different thicknesses and what you should set it up for. So for this one, for an eight, it's saying max one, which is, you know, like there's two main levels and then two subsequent levels. Anyway, max one, then the wire speed, 8.5. I'm a little familiar with this welder because five years, so I'm gonna set it to a little under eight. And uh, now let's talk about like techniques because to me, the technique is probably just as important as making sure your gas is turned on. Now, what most people like to do is, let's see. Where did I put the gun? What most people like to do is what's basically a circle technique. So let's say you've got those like that, and they'll just start doing circles, either up or circling back. Now, it works. I'm not a fan of doing it on like a horizontal bead where it would be something like this. I like to use that when it's a vertical weld. I think that works great for that because you can kind of fling the puddle around. For a horizontal one, uh, it just I'm not a super fan of it. For the horizontal one, what I like to do is like a, a J, and it's not just because my name starts with a J. Uh, it just it's what works for me. It's the most kind of natural one where you start at the bottom, go up, and then swing down into the puddle and then fling it back up. That's just, it works for me and uh, it might help you. 
I started off doing the circles and it works fine. I just think that the J works a little bit better. Um, there was something else that I wanted to talk about too that I'm going to completely forget, I think. Yeah, I think I'm gonna forget. So anyway, I'm just going to do a couple little ones. I'm gonna start off with a vertical one to show you if it wants to sit right, which it might not. Just to show you guys kind of what I'm talking about there. And we'll see if I can fuck it up on camera now that I'm doing this actual video. And, and this is one of the times where it's really convenient to have a bigger ground clamp, not that this is a big one, but I can use this as a clamp to hold them together. So basically for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here, let it burn in for a second, and then I'm going to drop down and then start circling my way down. MIG welding is it's pretty simple, it just takes some time to practice. It's nowhere near as skill involved as, uh, as TIG welding. Another thing that is, maybe it's just me, but I have to be kind of comfortable to get a good weld. Uh, if I'm in a really dumb position, then it, uh, it definitely affects <laughs> how well I weld. This tip is pretty bad, and I don't think I have any more. Oh, I might. Nope. Yeah, I need to get new tips, so this might... We'll see. I think it'll be all right. And then another thing I like to do, there are people who are really good at just one-handing it, uh, I don't have the best control over it, so I like to set up kind of like a guide hand, and then I'll use that, and I'll rotate my way down. It, again, it's what works for me. This might not be your deal. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see how this goes. Come on. So I don't know if that'll focus, maybe if I do that, but that's doing circles, starting at the top, letting it kind of burn in for a second, and then just circling my way down. And it's fine. This weld will, under no real world situation, break. That's a fine weld. That's a fine weld. I'm actually pretty content with that weld. <laughs> no, I'm actually really happy with that weld. It's, they're evenly spaced. I didn't wander up too much. It looks like it burned into both of them pretty well. I think that's a good weld. So now we can uh, move over to this one. And this is the one where I like to do the J's. So, and there are some people that say you should always push with a MIG welder or pull with a MIG welder. I've done it both ways. I don't think it really makes a difference one way or the other. I still, just whichever way works better, whatever situation I'm in. Sometimes you got like something, like say this is a three axis piece and you gotta get down in this crevice here. You're not gonna really be able to, you'll have to pull it out a little ways. So I think that, I mean, I've said this multiple times. I think the most important thing is to just start doing it. That's the easiest way to learn. Um, and then when you get like a glob like this, 
it helps to snip it off. Uh, that's a habit that I'm trying to get into, but sometimes when you're kind of in a hurry, I'll just burn right through it anyway. It, sometimes when you cut it off, it just helps the arc strike a little bit easier. So it just it helps you start. Anyway, let's uh, see if I can embarrass myself on this one. Again, let's. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but that's doing the J technique that I was talking about. Hopefully, you guys can see that. But again, I'm. Let me just get the camera. So that's doing the J technique that I was talking about. I'll start here, let it burn in for a second, go up, and then kind of back over like that. And uh, it's worked really well for me. I mean, you can see where I got a little ahead of myself there, but it looks like, for the most part, I call that good. It'll hold up longer than most of the stuff that I weld it to, so. So that's kind of my take on uh, welding. Again, circles for the vertical and uh, the J's to go sideways. Use whatever chart is on your welder to start with. Sometimes you'll have to Turn the speed up a little, turn the voltage up a little bit. Uh, sometimes when it's really windy, you might have to turn the gas up a little bit, like the, uh, the, the gas feed coming out of the nozzle, if that makes sense. That way the wind doesn't blow it away. Uh, but the main thing is just get out there, start doing it, start practicing. That's, that's really all you can do. You can watch as many uh, internet videos about welding as you want, but just getting out there and doing it is the only way you're going to get like really get any better. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. See you next time.